This is episode 74 of Let's Talk Geek. Coils, consilience, curiosity, contacts, and candy floss. Confused? Watch the show. Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 74. <laughs> With us tonight, we have uh, Jan Vermeulen. What's up? Uh, and our guest, Owen Swart. Welcome. Hi. We're going to get into more details who you are, where people can find you just now when we speak about you guys' podcast, and myself, awesome. Tim Hawk. Of course, the mixer shall not be known. Our random for them is the Higashi Fushimi Station. And since it's totally random, that is all we're saying about it. Yeah, go look it up on Wikipedia. Cool. Right. Cool. Um, events. And please donate money so we can get Jimmy Wales' ugly mug. Or just wait. Please, yeah. Just wait. It goes away. It's, it's timed. You, whether you donate money or not, that's the problem. <laughs> it always goes away just after Christmas or just before Christmas. Isn't there an extension to block it? <laughs> Somebody must have written that by now. I'm sure you could add, do that with Adblock. Maybe, maybe. yeah. Good thinking. Yeah. I must say, recently I had to turn Adblock off something. I always get like this shock what the web actually looks like <laughs> with Adblock turned off. <laughs> Oh, tip, by the way, I've realized in Chrome, if you've got Adblock on, you can't get into Ad. It, no loss to me, anyway. Yes. <laughs> right. Uh, things happening. Uh, th tomorrow is Evolution Day. It's basically, uh, I can't remember how many uh, years, but it's when uh, Origin Darwin. of the Species was first released. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's not his momentous trip. No, no, it's uh, publication date. Okay, cool. 151 or 152 it's just about 154, years. I think. Yeah, so somewhere like that. in that range, but I don't quote me on this. Um, then something happening December 3rd is the Johannes, well, Johannesburg Centurion uh, Google User Group meetup. Nice. Uh, I know I'm definitely planning on being there. Um, it should be pretty cool. I just want to go see what they're doing. And I'm yeah. sure I know Hawkeys Mystery will be there as well. Google User Group, so GUG. GTUG. I don't know what the T's for. Yeah, oh, Google Technology User Group. That's right. Meh. Okay, and that Doug goes far cooler. Anyway, I'm just <laughs> going to leave that there. <laughs> <laughs> goes from 10 till, till 2. All right, uh, let's go into straight on topics. Uh, but before that, I just want to say happy birthday to Fried Roadkill. Happy birthday, Fried Roadkill. Happy birthday. Um, He's a regular in chat and has joined us on the show before. So if anybody's wondering why we're saying happy birthday to like, well, something we, we, that we, sounds we, fairly dodgy. <laughs> 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 It's That's been a why. year since. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> cool. Anyway, uh, topics. Congratulations also to my broadband. Uh, you broke the one million monthly readers. Mm, nice. Yeah. So we've been pushing towards that for some time now. <laughs> that, that, by the way, let's uh, validate this one million monthly readers per month. Yes, monthly, oh, hence right. monthly readers. So, yeah, right. just so that's uniques uh, in, in web terms. That's unique visitors per month. Um, and we got a million of them nice. uh, during October. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's, that was a big milestone. There were some big bonuses attached to it. Very nice. cool. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's very cool. Um, don't know what our next milestone is going to be, but, like, I mean, it's probably going to be something unexciting like 1.5 million. Yeah, I, mean, I was going like to say. Like, a million is magical, you know? Mm, um, mm. So Come on. One billion. <laughs> <laughs> one billion readers. Never mind that we don't have enough uh, the people like that. Yes. <laughs> In this country. So, it, you just got to go worldwide syndicate. Simple, you know, it's just easy. Yeah. Next month. Yeah. <laughs> but but well done, it's very cool. Yeah. Nicely done. Um, all right. Then another cool thing that came out recently was a new USB stick. Uh, I'm trying to find out what it's called. Uh, cotton candy. Yes. Um, and basically, it's a USB stick with a HDMI port on the other side. Uh, you power it via the USB um, and then plug the HDMI into your TV and it's got Bluetooth in it. And basically, it's a full Android PC. You know why it's called awesome. cotton candy? Because mm. it weighs as much as a thing of cotton candy. I was going to say it's going to go with ice cream sandwich. and <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, no. I'm, I'm not sure it's running ICS, to be completely honest. I don't remember oh, which no. version of Android no, it's running. No, I think I'm it's I'm no. more talking about the fact that it's food-based. <laughs> 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 Since they are so food-based, eh. um, cotton candy will be C. So maybe this is the third iteration mm. of their mm. right, device. Right, right. That's awesome. I seriously want lots of those. Well, it, my thing is I'm trying to start between this and we spoke a bit uh, earlier on about the Raspberry Pi PC mm -hmm. that they're also trying to work out. Um, and that also is a USB and a um, HDMI port. Mm -hmm. But this is actually more PC-based. So it's also on PC. Oh, okay. But, you know, you're actually running a Linux distro on it. Interesting. And they try to do that. I, th I can't remember, but it was something like 200, 300 Rand. Uh, once you do the conversion in England and they want to then give this out and donate and put it out to the schools to try and foster awesome. innovation out there and get the guys used to work on the bare bones. They say the kids nowadays, 
kids nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> um, are basically just uh, when they hit a PC, it's all done for them. Right. And they want to start that whole innovation oh, on them guys fiddling yeah. with stuff again. Show them how it works. Um, but pretty cool. One of the cool things about this new Android one is you can plug this into your Mac or your Windows, and it will actually pull up a virtual little like server window oh, nice. into your running Windows. So you can do what well, they say is you can do coding in your win- main Windows or Mac, and then basically push it through to this other PC that's running in a window. Um, and if anybody's used the emulator. Yeah. It's quite slow. So it's 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 really like a very geek oriented device. I think for um, for general use, this isn't something I think we'd see necessarily. I think like in in terms of the age of you know computing and and the progress of computing, yeah. what what we will see is maybe smartphones. You know, uh, your smartphone becomes a mobile PC, and you'll do this, but you'll link your smartphone to a, a larger screen and work with it as if it's a PC. It, it won't be like a flash drive that you carry around because mm. you're going to want to be able to work like a laptop. Mm. You're going to want to be able to work on the go. And having to try and find a place to plug to, a USB in. stick into is not necessarily mm-hmm. the most user-friendly way to, to go about doing yeah, such things. Yeah, no, I do agree. But it's, it's, it's quite interesting. But it also does, if you think about it, you could actually do this as a very low-cost PC out right. into... Um, look, this one's maybe quite expensive, but the other one, the, the um, Raspberry Pi one, which is going to be quite cheap. You know, you can go into a rural school mm. and basically now you just need a screen mm. and a keyboard. Screen is just the most expensive part of a device, but yeah. maybe mm. we shouldn't go there. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Small screen. <laughs> <laughs> cool. but, but shared screens. I mean, that's mm. the other thing because screens are so expensive. Right. Um, unless you're buying a TV, by the way, but maybe we shouldn't go there. But mm. yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you could plug this thing into a three grand, 32 inch TV, with a, a you yeah, know, but it's, you can get a cheap screen and, and, and before about a, a grand. Mm. So, and if you can I'll, share that between a number of users, yeah. I mean, if not everybody needs to use the same screen, I mean, right. you, you can dra- dramatically reduce costs. Um, well, yeah. Anyway, but, uh, we think it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's rad. Uh, I don't know if I, no, I might buy one. <laughs> <laughs> there must be power one I definitely get. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're geeks though. We have to own all the tech in the world. Yes, of course. So if they want to give us one to review, we would, I mean, we wouldn't purely, say no. purely for review and ethical purposes. Right, of course. Um, then we'll take it. Cool. Mm. Yes. Anyway, uh, we haven't actually had a rant for a while, <laughs> but is it, is I believe you want time? to rant about this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll try uh, to let, moderate let me, it. Let me st- go in and then you can tell us why. They fail. Yeah, sure. Um, basically, uh, PayPal uh, with FNB have sort of apparently allowed uh, withdrawals to other banks. And basically, you've got to, I can't, I read the article and you've got to effectively sign up for like a empty bank account at FNB and they will then route the money f- through that to your, your, your actual bank. So, let's say you've got a net bank account, you go to FNB, you figure with them and they give you an online Profile. Profile. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, there's no real bank account behind it. Okay. And they link that into your bank account. Remember that statement. There's no real bank account behind it. All right. This will be important when I start ranting. Okay. I do imagine, look, the end promise is FB wants you to be at their bank and see their portal and well, how well, it works. Yeah, they they eventually make you want to op- cross I over I mean, to because FB. opening a bank account is as easy. There's a menu option on the left. Go, ah, new bank account. You can right. open one online. Ah, okay. Provided the thing works. But mm. you'll get there. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, that to me is, the sort of, which I'm quite good because, uh, one thing it doesn't do is it doesn't allow you to make payments out. So you can't pay someone else's only for uh, transferring money from PayPal into your bank account. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but what they say is most other people actually use their credit cards and don't store money in PayPal. Yes. Right. Um, you know, and there is uh, also that's maybe how I that. use it. Yeah. Mm. Plus, I mean, saying saying something to the effect of listen, top ups are for F and B customers only. You know, so there's like an element of exclusivity for F and B customers. I, th- I think that's a got no problems. Yeah, no, that's a valid. And this offers the main technique. problem we have in this country where people want to get With paid. Mm. Yes. Exactly. Um, so they offer you exactly. So they offer you the major, you know, the major solution, and then and and not to take anything away from F and B. I think they're doing a great job. You know, bringing F and B PayPal to South Africa. You know. Yes. In actual in actuality. Uh, look, I mean, not that we couldn't use PayPal before. You could link your credit card and stuff. You but couldn't get money out. You couldn't get money out right. and you couldn't pay money in to use it. I mean, you still actually technically can't use it without a, <laughs> some sort of credit card because you actually need a checking account, I believe, in order to actually be able to top up from FNB to PayPal. So if you have a check account with FNB, you can get a credit card as mm-hmm. well, I believe. Uh, I think that's the, how it works. Um, I, I remember it being an, an issue. Um, so... That said, um, I'm, I'm an APSA customer, and so I was really looking forward to linking this up. What a disaster. Is it? It's such a headache. Um, so first things first, 
Um, finding where to log in, where to click, and where to register. I mean, um, as somebody who's lived on the web for quite a while, you know, it's fairly easy to track down. Like, okay, cool. You, this, you this f- is f- f- search for it, you find it. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think we've got the links in the, in the articles on my broadband and everything. And so I went via that. They've since started up a new site that they're calling gotpaid.co.za. And you can go there and it's got all the steps on a neatly laid out website. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's cool. Mm-hmm. Cool. Register for F&B online banking. Fill in a massive form. So now this is where things get nice and geeky. So the username has to be between eight and 30 characters long. Eight. Eight. Has yeah. to be eight. All minimum right. eight characters long. The password restrictions. My usual one wouldn't work. Which is seven. My, yeah. My usual one is five or whatever. Um, and so uh, the password um, restrictions are ridiculous. It's, um, you know. But upper, it's, lowercase. Yeah, upper, n- lower. N- oh. Numeral. Numeral. Special no. character. Or four. Okay. Yes. Okay, cool. You know, right. I mean, it's sucky, especially if you've actually read XKCD and understand how entropy works, <laughs> information <laughs> entropy works. But um, the, then on top of that, you can't have repeating characters. So even if you want to, not, just because I've, I've created for myself a nice, long, easy to remember password, XKCD style, yeah. and then threw in numbers and special characters and an uh, uppercase letter specifically for this reason because Microsoft had the same restriction, the idiots. Yes, um, I also have one did. that I use. Mm, yeah. Um, so, so I write out this massive, um, this massive long string of text, but there are two recurring characters and a password of 40 characters and, oh. it, and it declines it. Oh. As in you may not have wow. two, two for, O's, even for, if they, two like, O's for, that's exactly the example I use in my article, which will run tomorrow. Wow. Two O's next to one another and it rejects the password. All right. So, uh, loophole, loophole, loophole. I finally find a password I'm comfortable with, with, and I, and I use that. All right. So now I've got my F&B online thingy. I get an email. I need to Fika. A little, or no, it's a PDF thing. They're like, listen, print this out for your records. Luckily, mm. there's a download button. Download the PDF. Now I've got the PDF stored in my Dropbox um, right. so that I, I've got you know, cool. like all my details in one place. Right. Cool. So they let you do that. You don't have to print it, which is rad. Mm. Or use a hack print to print a PDF. Um, I so, just use Chrome. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. yeah, or just use Chrome. So now I need to Fika. Cool. All my Fika cool. documentation is digital. I don't know if anybody else else is but I've got proof of residence I've got mm. proof of banking my, my uh, statements come to me electronically yeah. and I've got proof of address but I say what proof I find of is actually also allow you if you can get onto your online banking and you can print it out they accept that as well yes and that's cool. exactly what I did that's good. so I took I got that an electronic statement uh, proof of residence and what's the proof of identity and so my ID book is already scanned in for the hundreds of times I've had to do this before mm, right. rad mail that off not, you know, half an hour later. Um, okay, hang on. <laughs> Firstly, the, the first time I try to mail it off to the email address they provided, yeah. bounces. Email address doesn't exist. In fact, the, the whole domain Fail. the whole domain doesn't wow. exist. It can't f- re- resolve the domain. Really? Yes. So I call up support. I'm like, hey, your email doesn't work. <laughs> like, it takes them about 15 minutes to get back to me with an email address that yes. does work. Okay. Cool. Um, I email it off to them. So did you basically just try and get there too quickly that the domain hasn't propagated yet or something? <laughs> No, I don't think that this email address actually works. (laughs) (laughs) So they've since supplied me, you know, a new one. Within 30 minutes, my account is validated. Mm. Cool. Now I'm all excited. You know, it's already, I log in. The usability of the site was atrocious, but this might be linked to my next problem. So I don't want to comment too much on on all the bugs on the site because the bugs might be linked to my specific problem. So I click on PayPal services, link PayPal account. Error message. Mm. User not permitted to access this feature. Wait, what? So um, eventually two days of dealing with uh, first PayPal support who escalated the problem to uh, or spoke to their supervisor. I think they didn't actually escalate the problem. Yeah. Put me through to online banking. I had to explain the whole problem to online banking from the start. Okay. Then they had to try and figure out what was going on. All right. And so, and so they come back. They're like, no, sir, but you've got an inactive account. And that's why I'm like, I don't have an account with you. All I opened up was an online banking profile mm-hmm. to link my non-FNB account to a PayPal account. Five years ago, I had an FNB account, <laughs> which they closed they for me because I was a poor student. Um, <laughs> and so it, it you know, ran into deficits and then eventually yeah. went it's dormant and it's, and it's at zero balance. Well, I, I they had, had close it, it off. Do it friends, mm-hmm. even when there is balance and it's like 50 Rand or 80 Rand and nobody uses it for two years, that they, they'd also do it then. Just right. shut it down. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so FNB summarily closed my account. Apparently nowadays the service is much better than five years ago. But five years ago, an account was closed and um, there's a, a, my eBucks account remains on wow, their thing right um, and that's also it's run it ran into zero i think in 2007 and in their terms of service they say that they may close the account mm. if it's run to yeah. zero 
and uh, and so now the the uh, on eventually the online banking rep said, "Sorry, you're gonna have to go into a branch, explain the situation to oh. them." And they're going to. Have and so to. I told this person on the on the other end of the line, "You're like, you understand how daunting and unappealing a prospect this is." To have to go and stand in the queue in a branch, mm. have to explain this issue, which confused both of us so and badly. And you guys are tech people. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> you know, you who have to deal with online technology, me who's a tech-savvy user, um, and, and like we, we were speaking past one another. Now I've got to go and talk to somebody who sits behind a desk, um, explain the situation to them, tell them I'm not a customer, but, look, I've got but will you unlink my account? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, just walk in and say, I have a dormant account here. Just unlink it. <laughs> and that's eventually what they told me is, is listen to talk up to them tell them uh, go in with your ID book tell them look it up and unlink unlink cool. your account from the profile and I'm like you know what I'm, I'm just not interested anymore <laughs> I'm cool. going to find another look, way look having said this I must say F&B recently has actually been doing a lot of very cool things mm. um, they at the moment doing more than about any other bank I know pro- in progressing which is I'm going to hope I'm waiting for the other banks to now start to catch up right um Having said this, I always know as soon as these new things, there are a lot of teething problems. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, <sighs> F&B's online banking, when I, when I used to be an F&B customer back you know, five years ago, it was shocking then. Mm. Yeah. Apparently, it's improved drastically since. Mm. But mm. My, my recent experiences, I'm like, I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. Okay. No, well, I've, just, I've just heard uh, I know Cecilia's got the app. And I, do, I would love that app. You, yes, you know, sure. like, and the weirdest thing, the most important thing, you can top up your phone account oh, from the app. Nice. Top up your mobile phone account. Yes. From your phone. Sweet. So nice. now I don't have to log on somewhere and pay. Because I use pay as you go because I, buy my, I, just, I do not like contracts. They've, every time I've gone with a city and I've got a contract, they've horrendously, horrendously stuffed up my account. <laughs> so I'm at that point now, I just I refuse. Um, but now every time I need to, every month pay, I need to log in, whatever. And this would be great. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, that's enough of that. Um, sorry. I've just got to Moving swiftly along. We'll the cut this dead air. Super geeky magic. <laughs> we'll um, Facebook phone called Buffy. Nice. Yes. All right. Now, I don't want to get this wrong. So, I'm not really a Buffy geek, but I mean, this was such an epically geeky article on PC Mag, uh, it, it couldn't go unmentioned. So, everybody's like, oh, yeah, yeah you know, oh. the reason they're calling, uh, you know, All Things D reported um, on. Uh, the 22nd of November, that's yesterday, that uh, Buffy, they, they're calling their Facebook phone Buffy, mm-hmm. comes from Slayer, which is, you know, a reference to, you know... This um, app will be a Google. Slayer. Yeah, it's going to be... Uh, a, a, a being a corruption of the word social layer, actually. Mm. Oh, so right, okay. Slayer, social layer, nice. Buffy. All right, clever, Sweet. cute. And um, so this guy goes on... Uh, a, I'm a, actually going to. I'm going to try to. I'm going to try to to quickly. To, yeah, to to Paraphrase. not read it. But yeah. Buffy Summers lives in a town called uh, Sunnyvale, right? Right, right? And so, um, at any point, anybody is liable to become vamped. Any, yes. Like, and and they and uh, Joss Whedon, the greatest screenwriter and director of all time, <laughs> sets this up quite nicely from the start of the series. Mm. Like, you'll have somebody who seems like a critical character just suddenly become a vampire. Second episode, Buffy stakes him dead. Right. Out of the story. Like, you know, he sets up these major deep characters and just. Offs them. It's right. awesome. And, um, and so uh, he goes, all right, so in Buffy's world, vampires can appear human. Vampires can appear to be your friends. Many people don't believe vampires exist, but with a very, f- but with a very few exceptions, they're all bloodthirsty demons waiting to kill you. Google is one of Facebook's friends at Sunnydale High. It's been <laughs> one of Facebook's best friends for years. But something's a little odd with Google recently. It won't eat Facebook's APIs. It won't go outside to hang out unless the light of the Google Plus moon is shining. Motorola seems to be following it around everywhere. Maybe it's just having a bad week. Maybe it's just adolescence. But the mobile world is a hell mouth and it doesn't hurt <laughs> to be a little bit careful Google hasn't done anything truly scary yet but just in case Facebook is sharpening a steak <laughs> and the, the one thing I must just I just had a problem with it saying is it's API it's Facebook who didn't open up API yes right. I mean yeah. uh, it, it, there is an accuracy there I just yeah, thought sorry I, I know but it's very cool it's all twisted yes yeah. yeah. very yes. cool nice yeah. but um, I, I think the core here is um, uh, and this only became a thing in, in the Buff universe uh, later on was the Hellmouth that opened up in Sunnyvale. No, no, that was them in the, in the first episode. Sorry, I've just been re- re-watching Buffy. Okay, right, happens from the first episode. Right from the beginning, yeah, it was I the Hellmouth. I did not know that. The yeah, Hellmouth yeah. opens rad. That's why in Sunnyvale they've got all the vamps and all the things keep on happening right, exactly, there. yeah. I had to explain that early on, or else it would have been a bit uh, implausible. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's actually, <laughs> that shows massive, massive foresight in Joss's yeah, part. Absolutely. I love Joss even more now. Yeah. I'm such a Josh Whedon geek. That's why this story got mentioned, by the way. <laughs> uh, talking about, sorry, Josh Whedon, uh, other geeky people, 
I uh, can't remember what her name. She was in Dr. Horrible Sing Along Blog. Felicia Day. Felicia mm. Day. Right. She did a Dragon Dragon Age Redemption. R- redemption I think. videos. Yes. They're all on YouTube. Yes. Go check them out. They're pretty they're, cool. They're actually pretty okay. good. Not, not bad. You can see they're cheaply quality. done, but they, they, they're fun. Yeah. They're, they're worth watching. Yeah. And it's quite, it's about 10 minutes each, six episodes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and yeah, go check it out. Mm. Good stuff. Anyway, going from those geek things into another quite geeky thing, uh, Consilience Podcast. Yes. Uh, the reason why Owen Swart is here. That's right. Uh, do you want to first, first of all, who are you? All right. Well, I am Owen Swart, uh, commanding officer of the Federation Starship Dauntless. <laughs> <laughs> do, uh, do you want to give the background of I do actually know what that's about. But. All right. Well, yes, I'm, I'm a man of many things. One of the things I am is a, uh, I'm a president of a Star Trek fan club. Yeah. That's my credentials. I also, uh, I speak a little bit of Klingon. Um, some of our listeners may recognize me from uh, from 5FM where I used to have my late night Klingon lessons very <laughs> okay. late night a long time ago um, but yes I'm also on the Consilience podcast which is an African science podcast uh, which is a weekly show hour long in which we cover all things science and skepticism and critical thinking and, and that kind of stuff pretty cool yes I, I know you've got uh, two other compatriots that do it with you yes that's right Angela uh, and Michael Meaden who unfortunately Angela had a crisis today mm, mm. Um, and uh, I know Michael I think stayed behind to <laughs> calm her down and help, help her no, out no. through it so unfortunately they're not here as well um, I've listened to a couple of you guys podcasts it's very cool thank you it goes through this, uh, and once again obviously South Africa which is awesome mm. yes yeah, yeah we try to focus as much on, on South Africa and Africa as possible but um, how do you uh, where do you host and stuff uh, we host all free. We don't pay a cent for any of our stuff. We, we host our, our um, audio files on archive.org. Okay. We host our blog on wordpress.com. Oh, cool. um, and yeah, all free. Neat. Which Very is awesome. cool. And it seems to work for us. Mm. How do you get on archive.org since we mentioned it? Um, I don't We just open an account and there we were. Really? Yeah. And you can just upload video content? Well, we just do audio, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and do they have embeddable players and stuff that you I can? I think they do. Yeah. I, I mean, okay. And you, and of course, it's archive.org. I remember right. um, you can download all this stuff as yes. well, so it's not yeah. like it's locked in. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Neat. Yeah, all no right. Way. So um, I don't know if you've been following any of the any, any uh, of the news this week. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything particularly interesting, sciencey, other than uh, the, the the Darwin uh, anniversary coming up? Um, that's that's piqued your interest. Uh, well, we, we covered. We just recorded our own episode uh, last night. Uh, let me pull up the show notes quickly. Cool. Well, I'm here. <laughs> I know it was going to ask you. I know you guys <laughs> just gone to Apple. Yes, we finally we, we've uh, yeah we had a long standing feud with Apple, and it seemed that the the death of Steve Jobs was what needed to to did, secure did you our victory. Go through? Yes, yeah, um, it was quite. Uh, Quite strange. It's probably because I'm a notorious Apple hater, and, and my theory is that Steve Jobs had on his desk a list of people who were not allowed in the iTunes store, and my name was on that list. <laughs> and once once he was gone, that that list disappeared. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it was tidied away. Well, into a having said that, because I know we've submitted all of ours onto iTunes, and I know all of, all of the other ones are there. I just know the geek ones. Some weird things happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and all the others went, you, you submit, you normally get email back almost immediately, right. and it, it's up with about two weeks later. Mm. And I'll try to recently do add another one. And it just disappears into this black hole. Yeah. There's no email, no, nothing happening. So, yeah. So Well, all right. So let's talk about what uh, what we covered in this week's episode of Consilience, which will be coming out uh, on Friday, most likely. Yep. And uh, we, we we did some updates on stories that we've covered in the past. We'd, uh, we did a story a little while ago about a, a dude who uh, killed some people in a sweat lodge, which was not cool. But he's finally gone to jail, which is awesome. Cool. The, uh, the Russian uh, moon landing mission called Phobos Grunt is in deep trouble. It... Uh, it kind of failed while busy launching, and it's stuck in low Earth orbit. And now th- they were hoping they might be able to resurrect it and send it off to Mars, but um, the window has closed. So now Phobos Grunt is pretty much stuck, right. which is pretty sad. The Russians have yet again failed to get to Mars. Cool. Did you guys uh, talk about the Cur- uh, Curiosity rover? We haven't talked about that yet, but we'll probably talk about it next week. I see it's on our, on our show notes here. It's a it's a very exciting mission. It's, it's very very cool. J- just so everybody know, it's it's being launched uh, the twenty sixth of November. Mm, so it's, that's right. This weekend, right? Yes. Uh, um, and I was actually watching the video um, about it, and it's it's awesome. It's about the size of a car. It's awesome. It's huge. And if you think it's it how heavy that is to fly up, um, apparently it's got almost like one of the really cool things. It's got an entire. Its own lab yes. with lasers, so it can burn right. uh, the particles up. So you actually see the chemical composition of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it's no longer it's no longer solar powered. Right. It's, it's actually nuclear. uranium, so it's nuclear powered. So it's going to have a much longer battery life. Yeah. Once again, though, they said that they've planned this for this thing to last a year. Yes. Yeah. Now the last <laughs> one it was also supposed to be a year, but it, it was three wa- months. Three months. The, the was last, it only three months? Yeah. The last two were supposed to last for three months, but they well, one of them still going, and it's about six or seven years later now. Yes. It's amazing. Yeah. I, I know. The, I don't know if you ever used to guys 
saw the XKCD uh, comic oh, on right, it, yeah. which was quite sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Spirit, Spirit died. One of the two that, that went up a few years ago, and uh, that, that one died. The other one's still going. Yeah. Uh, opportunity, still, still running today. Might still be running by the time its big brother arrives. But it shows you the build quality that these things are and how much precision Absolutely. and stuff these guys go through. Absolutely. Um, but if you guys haven't checked it out, you should actually go check out the video where they actually talk about where it's landing and the fact that they've got a landing module that it actually comes down and then it lowers the um, the rover down mm -hmm. from it and without landing, then the rover gets dropped off pretty much and then it blasts off somewhere else. Right. So it won't chemically contaminate the area. That's awesome. Um, it's if you just look at the amount of planning and, and thought that they've actually got into. It's it's very very cool. Also, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's too big to to uh, to use the bubble uh, the airbag landing method that that its predecessors used. It's just too heavy that it wouldn't work. So they've had to come up with all kinds of clever things to to make it land. It's awesome. Such a cool idea. Okay. It's like being lowered on a grappling hook from a, a, a hovering platform. Oh man! It's, yes. it's, it's like, just think about the amount of computer processing and everything that's gone into that. That's brilliant to actually get that to work. We, we, we as it falls, right. that you know the thing must hover and it must obviously must land. You don't want it to land upside down because you're going to damage right. the thing. Right. And and they can't they can't guide it remotely. It, just, it has to do this on well, its own. Yeah, and at that speed that this thing's falling, right. it's, it has to correct. You know, oh, man, beautiful. Very time. very cool science. Um, and I know Cecilia would be happy with it. Um, <laughs> anyway, from that from one that one cool thing into another very cool thing, Tesla coils. Um, some guys are basically starting a, a Kickstarter project to build the largest Tesla coil in the world. Um, so go give them your money. Yes, nice. immediately. Yes. Um, they, they want uh, three hundred forty eight thousand rand. Oh, that's quite uh, quite a rand. Dollars. Thank oh. you. That's still quite reasonable, I think. <laughs> that's not too bad. No, no price is too great. <laughs> no, for, 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 for huge Tesla coils. Well, they're talking about the fact here uh, we, you know, and it's not just purely because Tesla coils are cool. Right. We also want to do some science and something about, uh, apparently, they, they sort of understand um, lightning is very efficient hmm. to act in the way it transfers its energy through the air. Right. They say apparently lightning for transferring the amount of energy or, or electricity is five times more efficient than we've been able to do as humans. Mm -hmm. um, so this is one of the problems also to study this. But they say one of the side effects of this is that they've designed this thing to work and, you know, safe distance and part of the thing will be an attraction. People can go watch them while, while they play with these, this huge Tesla coil. But at this rate, it might actually mimic lightning a lot closer because of the power, which which case it actually might be five times more efficient and effectively the sparks might go five times further. So you might be in like the safety zone except now it might work five times better <laughs> and go five times further. Nice. In which case, you're not in the safety zone anymore. <laughs> awesome. so I'm sure they'll test it before they do that. But if anybody doesn't know what Tesla coils are, start Googling hmm. YouTube, watch some videos on Tesla coils, even to the point where they're playing music with it. It's, these are beautiful, beautiful things. Um, I know this isn't in the topics list, but we, we, we mentioned energy and like solar power. I mean, it was in the context yeah, yeah. of Mars yes. rovers and, 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 and all that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> um, but something, um, it's an XKCD that was released either this week, I think it was this week, um, where um, XKCD looks at money. I mean, I mean mm. because of the context of the whole uh, Occupy uh, movement in the States right. and, and all that stuff. And one of the things that he has in this massive infographic, you know, it's one of those yeah. massive XKCD infographics like they did with the radiation, yes, right. the radiation scale. He did the exact same thing with money, with the money scale, moving from single dollars to billions of dollars. And um, in the billions of dollars scale, in the top rightmost corner of the infographic is a, I'm going to drop the link in the IRC, um, is a uh, thing of energy production. Mm. And um, solar is by far the least cost effective. Uh, yeah, I know. If, um, if you look at it, it's unfortunately. But though it, it, the efficiencies are well. improving. Yes, they are improving. Um, but just at the moment, I mean, it's just a... And, so, uh, and, and the most efficient, interestingly enough, was a type, um, uh, a type of, you know, highly advanced, I think, natural gas power generation. Interesting. Um, it, it is quite, gas is quite efficient. The problem is it's, it, it's a resource that will run out. Right. And that's half the reason why we're looking into the the wind and the solar is is to try and get away from resources Absolutely. where, where mm. as time goes by, we're going to run out. They're going to get more expensive, which is going to make everything else. more. the whole uh, and one of the things with natural gas is, as far as I know, it's greenhouse neutral. 
when okay. you burn it. Yeah, right, they call right. it That's advanced right. combined cycle natural gas. Yeah. And um, the, it's price of enough electricity to power all U.S. homes for one year by plant type is how he, wow. is how, how he measured it. Um, so I thought that that was actually quite interesting. And then conventional coal, he, he's based this all on, on actual research that yes, he's yeah. found. And so coal um, has like a very high variance. So you've got coal that can be very low cost, but that's, um, that's excluding you know, all the ancillary costs to coal, public mm. health costs, yeah. cleaning up the air costs, blah, blah, blah. But I mean um, – you know, similarly so, I mean, uh, you know, we, we're talking about clean and renewable energy, but the fact is, is solar panels, it takes, well, solar panels take input energy to make. Um, yes. Wind turbines take input energy to make. No, I don't well, know about well wind that, turbines. W- w- with the biggest drawfalls also, strange enough, is power storage. So mm. wind turbines, the wind doesn't blow now. Now what do you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, now I need cells. And we, we, our battery technology is not far enough now to actually store the excess energy. So, so there's a huge amount of energy that's actually wasted, even with any of the power power things that we use. So that was another thing that's missing from solar and uh, we're with the the gas and coal ones. Well, you, you can slow them down to, to an extent, you know, look, not perfectly, but far more, you know, the sun, unless you have a hot sun down day and no one's using electricity. Well, now you've wasted all that electricity. Yes, yes. Where once you've got storage, they will also improve their uh, usefulness. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's quite. But I know, speaking of that, I know South Africa d- has just started a solar panel. ESCOM was talking about it. They're starting one somewhere. Mm. Um, and half the reason why we're building these big um, coal fire, which I know COPE and COP is so anti about and all the rest of it, it's cheap. Right. And it's cost effective. And yeah, in this yeah. country, sorry. But it is, it is also important to, to note that ESCOM is looking at renewable sources. Mm. I mean, mm. so as long as we're developing towards, you know, Cleaning up our air yeah. um, and, and developing, you know, re- you know, so that we can eventually switch to something more renewable. More yes. Renewable. The, the, I mean, the, the counter argument is obviously coal is plentiful. Um, mm. There's really, like, right now people just look at it and go, there's more than enough. Yeah. Which is, the, you know, maybe not the correct attitude to have. But, I mean, it's, it's a human one to have. Uh, I mean, well, it's, just, it's, it's a natural one because you don't want to... You're shooting yourself in your foot, unfortunately, if you don't use it. Right. Because somebody else somewhere is using it, is going to mm. produce goods cheaper, is then going to – you're going to – that's the point. Exactly. Is you, want to, you want to be as competitive as you can be while at the same time trying to be cleaner. So I know a lot of the things now pushing is actually now trying to clean out the emissions from the coal stations. So except we're going to use coal and then it's cleaner. Anyway. Mm. Cool. It's Moving swiftly our, along. Google Wave. Yes, sad day. Yes, it is uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I never <laughs> really saw it used to Google. Like, we used for our show notes. I know, and, and, and I thought me. Google, I think Google Docs is way better. Much more collaborative. Wave is great. No. Just didn't, the thing with Wave was it would, it's strange, which still Google Docs didn't have. Mm-hmm. When somebody made a change, it would let you know. Right. So we do our show notes, right? And I, I'll put a whole bunch of stuff in it. Doesn't let you know that I've made changes to it. Yeah, yeah. What it does uh, is, is it, it makes it bold in the documents list. That's all it does. Yes, yes. but I've got to go. It's a, an active process. I've got right. to go and check it. All right, exactly. And I remember, it, like Google Wave had a really cool plugin yes. where IRC would actually not IRC, um, yes, via IRC, Messenger, yes. right, uh, yes. would actually notify me of changes and right. stuff. That and, was rad. Um, and the version playback feature was awesome, so you could see what changes have been made. I must say, I never really used it that much. Um, but look, a lot of the features that originally, while we picked it, have been moved into Docs. Mm, right. um, so Docs now have 99% of the functionality. Mm. I know when we first started doing the show, Google Docs, you couldn't have multi-editing. Right. It, it, it didn't work. But what I, The main thing I miss about Google Wave, and, and I still use it occasionally and, and will until it's shut down in April, is, uh, is the, the organic threading. So you can highlight a word anywhere in any post and start a new comment thread yes. coming off that word. I love that. And uh, yeah, I'd love to see, I don't know if it would be appropriate in Docs, but I'd love to see a product where that kind of thing I'm, I'm hoping that they add stuff like that to Google+. Plus. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that they can you really sort expand of the way in which you can have conversations right. in Google+. Plus. Yeah. My other problem with Google+, Plus is that when people reshare, mm. the conversation forks. Right. Do, you, do you want to do your next rant? For Google Plus, <laughs> since you're talking about it. Oh, so Google, um, for, for those of you who didn't get the notification this morning, when I signed into Google Plus this morning, they said, hello, Jan, uh, we are changing the way um, Google Chat works, and so all your contacts will be listed in here. What, what? And so my first reaction was, okay, okay this is probably… Just want to add something there? Sure. I never got that message. 
Uh, well, it, it's really just when you log into Google+, Plus, there's a little pop-up on the left-hand mm. side that comes up I, over Maybe chat. I did, but I, I, it yeah. wasn't obvious. Yeah, I, I got that message. I thought, yes, awesome. Google is giving me new things. It's like <laughs> Christmas again. <laughs> Thanks, Google. Yeah. And, and I'm like, my, my initial reaction was, obviously, I mean, I should have been a little more rigorous, but I was on deadline. Mm. <laughs> and so I had to get my day started. Um, and so I'm like, I'll worry about this later. Um, this is Google. Their privacy settings should be sane. So my initial reaction was, okay, if you've turned this all on, then it should mean that it is localized to Google+. No, no, no. There it spills over, like this evening only, though. I don't, I don't remember it seeing mine, it in the Mine day. happened at about 4 o'clock, yeah. 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. In I my suddenly had Google people talk, popping up. In my Jabber client, all of a sudden, I've got like a bunch of Google Plus contacts that I've circled popping up in my chat. Mm. I'm going, luckily, I, it's people I'm that assuming I like. it must be a, bi- a bi-directional <laughs> like. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, so you have to be friends right. or whatever. Yeah. So, and, and that's cool, you know, whatever. Uh, I can see myself using that on certain circles. Mm. But don't check it for all my circles. I mean, they have default friends, family circles. Check mm. it for those, and leave mm. it. I mean, that's a sane default privacy setting. Well, the problem with that is that they do have those default friends and family, but they don't know how you've yes how you yeah, chosen them. to do that. Yeah, okay, nice. so, yeah, actually, yeah, like, yeah, if you could. But there are some assumptions point. you can make that you go, "Hey, listen, guys, we, you know, that's your choice with how you've decided to use the system." Right. Um, we have given clear descriptors for what friends and family should be used. No, for. no, much simpler. Just make it, it opt in. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, or conf- configure it by circle. You, Did you they want not to learn their lesson with Google Buzz? This is Buzz problems. Mm. Though I must say I'm, I'm less offended. I don't know why I'm just less offended this time. I just love it. Um, it's awesome. With the thing though, if you want to, if they want to let's say make it so obvious, so you have to now remake the decision. Give a pop up where you say you have to go yes or no. So maybe not make it opt. Then I have to opt in, so automatically opt out. Make it when I log in. By the way, we're doing this. Which circles would you like us to do this for? Yes, yes. And now, by the way, I'm trying to because it's very irritating to me because I use an an off um, or an app for my Google chat. So I hate having my chat signed in via the web and Mm. via the client. So I'm trying to sign out of my chat in Google Plus and it won't let me. This wasn't a problem before, but now all of a sudden. So initially as well, the little you're supposed to. Next to chat, there's a little drop-down arrow. And in there is where the privacy settings and stuff mm. can be found. Right. Initially, there were no privacy settings there. Right. Um, then after some refreshing and Googling and whatever, I went back there. And all, all of a sudden, it appeared. Cool. Went to privacy settings, unchecked all my circles. I'll sort it out later kind mm. of attitude. Mm. Um, and now it refuses to let me sign out of chat. Mm. <laughs> Thanks, Google. Fun. There's something else that's changed in, in Google Chat in the last week or, or two, at least specifically in, in Google Plus, which is interesting. Um, group Chat is no longer available in the iGoogle version of, uh, I see in the Google Plus version of uh, Google Talk. Okay. It's still, still available in Gmail, in iGoogle, and Orkut, but no longer in Google Plus. You can have a group chat, group chat session open that's been initiated elsewhere, but you can't initiate it from within. Is that uh, not because I want you to rather hang out? Yeah. I think that's probably the case. Look, I must say, I'm starting to see there was a whole thing at early on this year where, where they said Larry Page they made all their bonuses and stuff contingent on social working and if social didn't work none of the, the guys in Google got their bonuses wow. and you can see there's suddenly this marketing spin and push for Google Plus I don't That's mind I think Google I Plus feel, is fantastic yeah, but it, it's been pushed on but me. don't Facebook it don't don't Facebook me. Don't yeah, like, that's what go I mean. with it's, Facebook's it's a, insane privacy defaults. In the old days when Google wanted something to succeed it was well let's make it better now it's about how do we make you have to use this to do something else. Yeah. Right. And by the way, they have actually started to do this for webmasters. This is something I actually have to look seriously look into on my broadband and my gaming. But um, for search results, um, for richer search results, you need to actually have a Google profile hmm. and link that Google profile to your authors on your yeah, media right. site. Um, and have a direct link with the, with the correct rel tag, I right. think, um, for them to show up in search results properly. Right. So, I mean, uh, luckily it doesn't affect search results yet, but it, but plus oneing does. I mm. know, oh, and have you also noticed that you can uh, now specify with the plus one that it's for this specific article? 
Okay. Uh, you can link it in, so it links back to that article. Mm, right. And also, you can then also change the icon and stuff like that. Um, so they've actually even made it more. So they're, they're pushing the plus um, one. Th- that, was, that was always, I mean, uh, when I implemented plus one on my broadband the first time around, I could do that. I could be like, you know, it has to be this article, and I could change, you know, the I- there were very, very min- minor changes you could make to the icon. Okay. It was like small, medium, and large. I think those no, are the choices. No, there's a couple more. I just remember from the Google event, they, they apparently it. Because I wasn't that interested, I didn't pay that much attention. <laughs> but just go look at it yeah. again. They've done yeah. some other cool I, stuff. I'll there. take a look at what they've done. But from the start, I know that when we put it in my broadband um, and it failed the first time, we took it off because it took up needless space. Now I've put it back again. Still nobody plus ones, but it's there. Yeah, I saw you, plus you, one now. You, you need to have it there. Yeah, I actually plus one something today, a neat WordPress plugin for um, counting post views. Mm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. Well, look. I think half the thing is just not on the mindset yet. Yeah. Well, if if you can do the share from the plus one button, which doesn't seem to work everywhere, uh, but in some places where you click the plus one button, it pops up a little block that says, would you like to share this in Google Plus? Once that's implemented everywhere, it'll make a lot more sense, I think. Okay. I need to implement that. Mm. All right. There's a plus one on the viewer. If you are viewing this live, please push plus one. (laughs) (laughs) Or click on the like, Twitter, et cetera. Um, Cool. Soon you're going to be able to use contact lenses to watch video. Awesome. We'll see. (laughs) (laughs) I I, I must say that um, at the offices... But uh, creepy. (laughs) At the offices, our guys are suckers for cool gadgetry. And so on Woot.com, there was a special on sunglasses or... Yeah, I think it's sunglasses with uh, built-in LED screens. No, LCD screens. For how much? I don't remember. It Enough. can't have been that expensive if uh, the person went, ah, I'll try it. <laughs> um, but apparently it sucks. Oh. <laughs> it's yes, really – because, I mean, just th- I mean, just thinking about it optics-wise, your mm. eyes have a certain focal length. Right? Yes. And so having something right in front of them, mm. it, it doesn't so- feel like it'll, they'll, you should be able to focus that closely. Well, well they should be able to – okay, in, in this article, which I actually did read through and they talked about – okay, let's quickly talk about this article and I'll come back to that. Um, basically, what they've done, they've made contact lenses with a single pixel inside. Um, and then what they've got, they've got a circular uh, induction transmitter. So you, you can from remotely induct uh, the pixel to turn on and off and I would imagine change color and stuff like that. Um, and they've tested this on rabbits, which if you see there's a picture, <laughs> it's the rabbit wasn't hurt. They're just proving that, it, yeah. but it's it makes you feel a bit. They gave squishy. it a carrot afterwards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and apologized. Um, Rubbed it but it's, look, it's, it's going forward, and they say as time goes by, they've already got one that works with possibly four pixels, and go forward in the future. And, the, and the, in this article, they actually talk about that same problem about your focus lens. And what they said is actually what they're going to do in later versions of the contact lenses, they're going to have fre- Fresnel. Uh, lenses in there and that's basically how they do is they do like cut little notches out um, lighthouses and stuff use it and you can basically in a very short area create a, a much better lens hmm. okay. uh, they're not, not as good as the proper lenses but you can do some pretty cool stuff and imagine they'll start to do the same with the glasses what you actually want to do is let's say if you actually held the glasses away maybe the image is blurry but at hmm. that that close to your eyes when your eyes look through the thing that it then hmm. because of the remote focuses that that Focus the image to what your eyes would focus to, if that makes sense. Right. And that is actually how you get around this. Now, my idea, the actual correct solution to this is glasses. It's not mm. contact lenses. Because mm. if you think about the, the, how close the circuitry needs to be to have a good picture, you still want the contact lenses to be able to breathe so your eyes don't go red and mm. cause mm. problems. There. Um, also, I want to be able to take it off quickly. Right. You know, if I don't want this thing and it's busy bugging me, I want to be able to put it down. Um, so it's like having, I don't know if anybody's had where the touch pad's always on and you're busy typing mm, and mm. you suddenly move. So it's, mm. it's that effect. You want to be able to take the glasses off. But at that point, I think it'll be pretty cool because yeah. you can pull up all the stuff. As you're walking, you can pull up that whole view. And also you can put the camera inside right. the glasses. So I don't know. To me, I think the glasses are the eventual solution. Well, yeah. Augmented, re- augmented reality goggles. That's, that's the obvious killer app for this. Mm. Just have a nice little overlay over your world. Freaking awesome. But yeah. Anyway, and from that, that's most of it. We're going to go into our kicker, um, which is just very, very cool. And it's basically uh, they, they say they've made walking robots, but it's actually more. I don't know what you call it. Call Riding it robots. robots. That's it's it's inflatable robots. Okay. And basically, what they did is they took up. Sure, you've seen these big inflatable things, and 
Okay, maybe on side of the one highway. <laughs> maybe most. Uh, that like should a, be in the title of the show, by yeah, the way. Yeah. Uh, inflatable dolls. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Um, and basically, what, what they've done is uh, they've created a pseudo six six legged elephant. Right, as you do. Yep, as you do. Well, if you look at the prototypes, they originally did this with an elephant. Oh. Okay. Uh, so why? That's why I think they went. So it actually has a, a long forward trunk, and then by using pneumatics, um, they can bend the legs. Okay. And they make it walk. And they say what's really cool about this thing is that it actually, once it's done, you can actually fold it up and carry it. One, one <laughs> man can carry it. Nice. Uh, but fully inflated, it can actually carry two or three men. Sweet. So um, also, it will work in water. So it's an inflatable robot pony with six legs. Yes. And a trunk for some reason. That's awesome. Yes. That's like the perfect gift for like your, your geek little girl. Yes. yes, and you actually see there's a kid riding it with a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the I don't know, in one of the videos. Um, it's it's actually very very cool what, what they're doing. And if you actually think it's actually quite simple, I would imagine this is way cheaper than building. In this, it's just air, so you need a compressor, and then you need some valves to turn the air on and off. Is which it does cheaper than a pony? Taking into account the fact that you have <laughs> to stable and feed and keep that pony healthy. True, but you might. <laughs> I don't know how many hours you're going to be spending of your personal time building this. Mm. <laughs> but how many hours of your personal time are you going to spend grooming a pony? Yeah, you know, no. being being nice to your pony so that you know it's a living being. So <laughs> yeah, I would imagine it's possibly cheaper than a pony. Nice. I was thinking cheaper than building a a robot. <laughs> you know, one with the server motors yes, and all the rest right. of it. So yeah, because effectively this is just material that you need, wow. and air and a compressor. That's very cool. Um, and theoretically, you, you can then. Do far more complicated. It, it won't be as precise as, as, mm. as other robots. You know, having like a servo. And um, but in this thing, they even got to the point where they actually make a hand. Nice. Um, so I think that's very, very I cool. wouldn't feel too comfortable shaking an inflatable hand, I think. But What? <laughs> it's just one of those uh, mm. uncanny valley moments, I yeah. think. That is a bit weird. Cool. Um, and with that, I think that's the end of the show. Yes, I just yes. want to, uh, Don't say goodbye. Say thank you to everyone for listening. Yes. <laughs> uh, thanks to Jan from Yellen for joining us. Uh, you can find him on my broadband. I am the staff writer. Yeah, or at Jan VZA. Correct. Underscore Jan no. VZA. Well done. Uh, Owen Swart. Yes, you can find me at owenswart.org. And where, where can they find your podcast? Uh, that's at conciliancecost.wordpress.com or just go to owenswart.org. There's a link to it from there. Cool. Twitter? Uh, at owenswart. Google Plus, you that Google is fanboy. Owenswat.org takes you to my Google Plus profile page. <laughs> cool. And myself, Tim Hawk, you find me on Let's Talk Network or at Tim underscore Hawk on Twitter. And then also just thank you to the mixer, who shall not be named, who we, we need to set up a Twitter account for at some point. Yes. And it's on get the list. voice distortion and masks. Mm. And well, we don't need the voice distortion. That's true. When voice the, naturally distorts. When, when the mixer speaks, your drums explode. <coughs> true, you might want to distort it so, so we don't hurt people with the yes. voice. Yes, it's basically yeah. safety margin. Right. Exactly. Cool. All right. With that, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. And don't forget to catch our other shows. 